Hello, my name is Jimmy Vegas and welcome to this, the fourth in a series of video tutorials on how to create a Mario game in Unity 5. Okay, so this episode we're going to be looking at uh, putting our player in and we're also going to be writing a script so our camera can actually follow our player correctly. Now for legal reasons, um, I cannot use a Super Mario model to run along this level or any level within this tutorial. Um, I can't even legally tell you where to get one. Um, I can, however, suggest to you that uh, you can probably get one through a Google search. So if you want to use a Super Mario uh, model, that's entirely up to you. But as I say, for legal reasons, I can't. I will be using something called Ethan, which is uh, a default third-person character in Unity 5 which has everything preset ready. So, I want to import him now. Down here in your asset window, if you right click, go to import package, and hopefully you should have this list. If you don't have this list and it just says custom package, um, I'll put a link in the description of this video and it will uh, link you to somewhere you can download uh, standard assets for this um, particular version of Unity or whichever version of Unity you use. Um, the standard assets uh, is basically a package of all these and some people install it, some people don't, so that's why they only get a custom package appearing and none of the others. So if you have it, that's fine. If you don't, head over to the link that's in the description. Uh, once it's all done, click on Characters and it will just decompress the package for just a second. Okay, usually here uh, it will say uh, blah 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 all your assets and then this button will say import. I've already gone ahead and imported it just to save a little bit of time. So when this window does appear, yours probably won't say that. Yours will probably say import down here. So just click it. After that's done, you'll have this folder here called standard assets. If you click the arrow next to it, you'll see a couple more folders appear. If you click on characters you'll see even more folders appear. And then if you click here on third person controller, you'll see even more folders appear. The folder we want to use is something called prefabs. Within prefabs, there are two items. One is AI and one is a third person controller. We want this one. Real simple, drag and drop straight into your scene. Okay, so now you can see him over here in hierarchy and in the scene. I'm going to double click here to zoom in and as you can see he's facing the wrong way so let's rotate him on the Y 90 degrees and that faces him the correct way I think I need to move him into the middle because I'd like him perfectly center of this platform here so we need to change uh, the Z or Z axis to 0. 5. So he's now perfectly in the middle. And hopefully, when we press play, use the arrow keys or the WASD keys, and he should move along nicely. So notice that the camera doesn't actually follow us. Even though there is a camera, it isn't following us. We need to write a script which allows the camera to understand who we are and what we want it to do. So let's get into that, shall we? Press play again to stop the game. So I'm going to come out of all these folders now, click this top arrow on stamped assets. On this assets at the top, right click, create folder, and I'm nice, nice and simple scripts. And let's head into that folder. So every script we write, I would like to store within this folder here. It just keeps everything neat and tidy. So right click, Create and go with JavaScript, it's nice and easy. We may use C sharp scripts later on just to kind of prove Unity can handle uh, more than one language at any one time. It is quite useful sometimes. I'm simply going to call this script camera follow. Okay, so double click and it should open up in either Mono Develop or Visual Studio. I'll be using MonoDevelop 
for this tutorial. If it's opened up in Visual Studio, for example, and you wish to use Mono Develop or the other way around, you can change it by going back into Unity, going to Edit, Preferences, External Tools, and then you can set whichever um, software you want there. So, for example, if you want Mono Develop, click Mono Develop. Okay, so back onto the script. Usually it will give you just a couple of lines of code already pre-written to help you, but we're going to delete them. We're going to write this script from scratch. So to get this working, we need to set some variables. The first variable needs to be our actual player himself. Um, but it is a game object, but we can't quite use it as a game object, so we need to make sure the camera can actually follow it. So we need, first of all, var, oh, not bat, var, variable, and hopefully if you use them on develop, it should turn kind of a teal color. And then let's have player, and that needs to be transform with a semicolon at the end. So all we're doing there is stating a variable which defines our player. The next variable we need, type var, is the distance from our um, player itself, the camera distance. So let's put distance from player. And ideally, um, we don't really want it to be an integer because it may not necessarily be a whole number. So we'll have to use something called a float. So if you have a decimal number in Unity, or a script I should say, um, it is a float. And we want to, let's make that equal to 5 for now, I think, with a semicolon at the end. So remember, most lines in um, code always end with the semicolon, within the, in the script I should say. Um, so that line there, we're just saying, we set a variable which is the distance from our player, and we've currently made it equal to 5, but we may change it later on. The last variable we need is the height of the camera. So we need to set a variable which defines how high our camera can be to follow our person, because we don't want the camera moving up and down as our person jumps up and down. We just need it to stay straight and focus the whole time. So let's have that as static camera y, because we'll be using the y-axis for that one. That will also be a float, but we'll make this equal to 3. Okay, so, so far we've written three lines. One thing to note here is um, it is case sensitive. So remember that when you type var, it is all lowercase, float is all lowercase. I've set player, distance from player, static camera y, with some capitalization in there. It doesn't matter if you put caps on that or not, as long as you remember, if you have, you need to use the caps later on in the script. If you haven't, then don't use the caps later on in the script. So we need to do a function now, and that's all lowercase, and update. Now a function update is something which is called um, every frame the game runs, basically. So we've done their function update, open close bracket, and then open curly bracket. Next line down, we need to transform the position on the Z or Z axis and make it equal to the player's um, position dot Z, Z axis minus whatever we've set here as our variable for distance from player. So distance from player with a semicolon. So just to quickly recap, we're setting the camera's Z position the same as the player's Z position, but then bringing it backwards however many we've set here. So we also need to transform the position on the x-axis, and we need to make this equal exactly to the player dot position dot x. We don't need to take anything else away from that, we just need to make it identical. And close curly bracket. 
We also need a second function, which is late update. And with this one, remember that's open close bracket and then open curly bracket there. We need to get component of the camera. So get component oops, um, dot open spiky bracket camera close spiky bracket open close bracket dot main because it was obviously is the main camera. We need to transform the position on the y axis and we need to make it equal to our static camera y and then next line close curly bracket so this line is basically stating that our y value for our uh, camera is going to be equal to whatever we put up here so control s to save or file and save up here so make sure you save that script if you have problems with the script you can get it for free on our website if you head over there um, the script will be there and you can just copy paste it into here and it should be working no problems so once this script is done we need to drag and drop onto our main camera up here and then click on your main camera and you'll notice that we set the three variables and they are here the player the distance from player and the static camera y and remember we set it as five and three so here you've noticed player box is a bit different and it has non transform we need to set our actual player object in this box so real simple head over to your third person controller drag and drop it here and you'll see changes now hopefully when we press play now the camera should focus on our player and it does so as we move our player along, you can see that everything looks just fine. But hopefully when we jump, the camera doesn't change up or down. So that is exactly what we want. So if you want to play around with your camera a little more, whether you've got the rotation on, whether you've got anything. So let's say the rotation is, let's put the rotation as 15 on the X, so it kind of looks down a little more. Distance from player, let's put that as 6. And let's press play again. You can see the camera looks a little different now. So maybe we have to raise up the camera to 4 on the Y value. And let's try again. Okay. Yeah, that looks okay. I'm quite happy with that. So all it really is at this point is playing around with your transform settings and the camera follow script settings. Just getting things nice and well, kind of in place. Um, if you want to, for example, put your player um, or over this way or something on the um, left hand side, you can do that in the X value settings. So for example, if we quickly go back into our script and let's put minus 10 on our X axis and save, press play. Thinking about it there, you can see it actually puts him all the way over to the right. So you can position the camera any place on the player just by using this line here and modifying it. So to get it a little bit more like Mario, we need to put plus, um, let's try six. And hopefully when we press play now, our character should appear more over to the left of the screen rather than center. And he does. So it's entirely up to you whether you want to have your character um, over to the left, over to the right, or dead center. For now, I'm going to leave him dead center. I may change it later on, depending on how far we get with um, this level and whether it makes any sense to have our character over on the left, in the middle, or whatever. 
So we'll leave that uh, tutorial there for now. Um, next episode we're going to be looking at um, creating another section of this level primarily with this pipe. So when you go down a pipe you end up in a kind of a darker area of a level. Uh, we're going to be building that up and seeing where we get to. Uh, we'll also be playing around with these blocks. So when you hit these blocks they'll actually do something. For example, break. Now breaking these blocks, again for legal reasons I can't do exactly what uh, happens in the real Super Mario game, but we'll do something, well, something that makes sense at least. And so we'll be doing a bit more scripting there. So until next time, as I say, have a play with the camera, get it perfect how you want it, and just have a play in Unity. So until next time, thank you very much for watching.